Shalom and welcome to TGC. Today I want to look at Deuteronomy 18, 18. And I have this video up here. It's called Third Temple Hashim Muhammad and Jewish Visitors. And it's on the channel SD Dawa channel. I only bring this, I'm only showing this video because about the 15 second mark, Hashim, this gentleman, claims that Muhammad is the descendant of Ishmael, making Muhammad an Ishmaelite. So, what we're going to do. We will go through the scriptures and we shall see what we come up with. We're going to start in Deuteronomy 2. And we will start at verse 2. This is Deuteronomy 2, verse 2. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward and command the people, saying, you are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore, watch yourself, yourselves carefully. Now, it's written that you are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau. It does not say the descendants of Ishmaelites. So I'm thinking if Ishmael is not from the descendants of Esau, but rather being a descendant of Ishmael, it disqualifies him as being the prophet promised that's likened to Moses in Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Unless I'm mistaken, and I don't remember, I don't recall the Bible saying the descendants of, Ish, of Ishmael are the brethren of the twelve tribes of Israel. It does say Esau here in Deuteronomy 2, but I don't recall it being the Ishmaelites. So we will go to Deuteronomy, the next verses, Deuteronomy 18. Now I'm making this video because the Muslims in Speaker's Corner, they claim Deuteronomy 18, 18 is referring to the prophet likened to Moses. So we will see what we come up with. This is Deuteronomy 18. I'm starting at verse 15. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear according to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see his great fire anymore, lest I die. So what are we reading here? So first it says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. This is Moses speaking. From your midst. From your brethren. Now, what makes Moses different than the prophets? Of all the prophets that came in the Old Testament, what makes Moses different than all the other ones? He was the one who led them out of captivity, out of bondage in Egypt. He took them to the wilderness and he was there when they went into covenant. When God went into covenant with the house of Jacob. 
Now, if this is if this is Muhammad that we're proclaiming, did Muhammad, did Muhammad come for the twelve tribes of Israel to lead them back out of captivity from exile? We will continue. And the Lord, we're at verse. Okay, we're gonna go back. Now the great, in the Lord your, 16, according to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly. What is the day of the assembly? It's when they gathered and heard the voice of God, saw his glory, the great fire, when they went into covenant with God. Saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire anymore, lest I die. <laughs> Verse 17. And the Lord said to me, and the Lord said to Moses, What they, the Israelites, have spoken is good. I, so this means God has agreed to their request not to let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God nor let me see this great fire anymore so when God said what they have spoken is good he's ag agreeing he's it's agreeing that he will do that for them I will raise Verse 18, I will raise up a prophet. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks, in my name, I will require it of him. So, I do not agree that it's Muhammad. I do believe that it is Messiah Jesus and Manuel. For one, the people that are there that Moses is speaking, speaking to is the Israelites from, am from among their brethren. So let's go to Psalms. Now I'm going to read some of this. I probably won't read all of it, but I just want to see. We'll just, this is Psalms 83. We're going to start at verse 1. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult. And those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people. Who's his people? The 12 tribes of Israel. And consulted together against your sheltered ones. Who are his sheltered ones? His people. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be remembered no more. Do we hear that language today? Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Edomites are the descendants of Esau. And the Ishmaelites are the descendants of Ishmael. Clearly, it's two different people groups. So in Deuteronomy 18, when it says from your brethren, we know that the Edomites are 
said to be the brethren of the Ishmael or the Israelites, but we are not told that Ishmaelites are the brethren of Israelites. So, as in this video, the Hashem said, Muhammad is from the lineage, is a descendant of Ishmael. I do not understand how that still qualifies him to be the prophet like you from among your brethren, as in, in as we see in Deuteronomy 18. It would. If they were going to go back to Deuteronomy 2 and claim that it can be an Edomite, which, no. Then Muhammad being an Ishmaelite, he's disqualified. Six, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gibal, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia with inhabitants, of Tyre. Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Deal with them as with Median, as with Caesarea, as with Jabin at the brook of Kishon, who perished at Endor, who became as refuse on the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb. Yes, all their princesses, princes like Zeba and Zalmuna, who said, let us take for ourselves, ourselves the pastors of God for a possession. Is, is there anyone doing that today? Who wants the Holy Land? Who is claiming that the Holy Land does not belong to the Israelites. So, we have here Zeba and Zalmunna. Now we're going to cross French for cons So he's saying, make their nobles like Oreb and Zeba. He's talking about make them, do to them like you did to these. Yes, all their princes like Zeba and Zamuna does not Genesis saying teaches us that the that twelve princesses would come out of the lineage of Ishmael. So we have and their princes like Zeba and Zamuna. So what does that tell us? Let's look at the next verses we're gonna look at. We're at we're going to look at Judges 8. So this is Gideon. Verse 20. You can read this story in the whole chapter. But in verse 21. So Zeba and Zamuna said. Rise yourself and kill us. For as a man is. So is his strength. So Gideon arose and killed Zeba and Zamuna and took the crescent ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Why do we see crescent ornaments? Do we see crescent ornaments today? Anywhere? And do we see it in the Holy Land? You can study. We can study together. I can do another video on this. But in the meantime, we're going to proceed. Next, we're going to look. So Deuteronomy 18. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him 
And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. So, we are now at John 14. We're going to see what Jesus, the Messiah Emmanuel, has to say. Starting at verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. How have they seen the Father? Because they have seen Jesus. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do, not, do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So Jesus is saying the Father dwells in him and that he only speaks what the Father tells him to speak. Next we will look at John. We are in John 12. John 12. We're going to start, let's say 42. Verse 42. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words, has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command. What I should say and what I should speak, and I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, Whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. So that prophet in Deuteronomy 18 will speak what the Father speaks, will speak what the God tells him, will, God will put his words in his mouth, and he will speak what the God has told him. And we're seeing this. Now we're at John 5, verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assertively, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees 
the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Those are pretty powerful words. So these verses in John, just a few of them, I've shown verses where Messiah Jesus in my well is stating he only speaks the words that he hears from the Father. That the Father tells him to speak these words and he speaks them. Fulfilling Deuteronomy 18, 18. And we know, maybe I can show in another video, God willing, but we pretty much know, we already know that Jesus came to lead the 12 tribes of Israel back to the promised land. In his first coming, he had to make a way. And many people don't understand how he made that way. I have a video. Why did, Messi why did Messiah really have to die? I explain it in that video. It's, it may be long, but I go over it. Jesus said he was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Everything Jesus did was signs that were given to them that were prophecies in the Old Testament, in the prophets. And those who had eyes to see saw it. Those who did not, did not see it. Next, we have... This is Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. We're going to just look... If you want, you can read the whole thing. But I'm just going to touch on this verse. Verse 16. It is written... Come near to me. Hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, I was there. And now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. Lord God, the spirit, and the son. Do you see it? We're going to go on. Now this is Isaiah 54. Okay, 54. I'm going to start at verse 9 again. You can read it, the whole chapter if you like. Verse 9. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn... That the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth. So have I sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. So who is God not angry with? The children of Israel. The twelve tribes of Israel. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O you afflicted one, tossed with temptest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems, and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and 
all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord. Do you see this? All your children shall be taught by the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. Through the righteousness of Messiah we are redeemed. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Why do we see all your children shall be taught by the Lord? And great shall be the peace of your children. Because when he brings them back during the second exodus. We're going to see. He, this is Jeremiah 31. Here the Lord... Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob. Has Mohammed redeemed Jacob? Jacob being the twelve tribes of Israel. Messiah Jesus in my well came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel who were divorced and scattered to the four corners of the earth. And he came to make a way that they could return. See my video, why did Messiah really have to die in Listen to it. See what you come up with. See if I'm wrong. And ransom him from the hand of one stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the heights of Zion. In my last video, which was this one, Speaker Corner, Second Exodus, Christian and Muslim Debate Truth. In this one, I talk about the singing. What does singing mean? Because Muslims in the part at Speaker's Corner also claim do, uh, Isaiah 42, verse, I believe, 10, where it states, Sing to the Lord a new song refers to Mohammed as well. Be they're saying a new song is a new law, which would be a new Torah, which to them they're saying the Sharia is the new Torah, which is false, which is completely false. The new song redeems the new song refers to the second redemption, the gathering. The gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel out of all the nations that he has scattered them. Just as they sung in Exodus 15, the song of Moses to the Lord. When they came out during the first exodus from Egypt. The new song sing to. Therefore they shall come and sing in the heights of Zion. Referring to he brings them back a second time. During the second exodus. He brings them back and they're going to sing the song to, of the Lord of redemption, of the gathering, of taking them out of 
all the nations, not just one, which we saw in Exodus, but this time, because they're scattered to all the nations, he brings them back from all the nations. That is this new song. So in that video, I go over that, and you can see that in this video. Sp Speaker's Corner, 2nd Exodus, Christian and Muslim Debate Truth. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance. The virgin shall, the ten virgin parable, when the bridegroom comes, brings them inside the house. Now just a quick reference, the parable of the ten virgins. The Torah is a lamp to our feet. They have the lamp, but they have no oil. In the parable, ten virgins come out and they all have lamps. Five had oil in their lamps, five did not. Five, the wise, Torah teaches, okay, Torah teaches us that the wise obey Torah. They follow Torah. Those who are unwise do not follow Torah. Now, they all had, the, the ten virgins all had lamps, but only five had oil. Only five of the ten followed Torah. Those were the wise, the five wise virgins. The five non, the five foolish virgins did not have oil. They did not follow Torah. They had the lamp. They had the Torah. Just like Christians. Many Christians believe they don't have to follow Torah. I do not believe they are correct. I believe anyone who believes in Yeshua HaMashiach, in my well, follows his Torah that he gave to the 12 tribes of Israel at Mount Sinai when they came out from Egypt. So the Five, uh, so when the bridegroom came at midnight, the five with the who had oil in their lamp, the five wise virgins who followed Torah went into the house with them. The five came later. The the five foolish ones came and knocked on the door and said, "Lord, Lord, let us in." And he said, "Depart from me, from I never knew you." Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, because they're singing, and the young man and the old together, for I will turn their mourning to joy, will comfort them and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priest with abundance. Now, we're going to see why... As we saw here in Isaiah, that all your children shall be taught by the Lord. Why is that? Because in Jeremiah 31, 31, during the second exodus, when he brings them back, when Messiah... Jesus in my well comes and brings them back. There will be a second covenant. This is what happens when he comes, just like Egypt. Just like the exodus from Egypt, so shall the second exodus be. Biblical history is biblical prophecy. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, that's the northern kingdom, Ephraim, and with the house of Judah, the southern kingdom, or just Judah. Now, I'm going to pause here and talk about the parable of the prodigal son. The prodigal son left, he took his inheritance and he left the father. 
That is the northern kingdom when they got divor uh, divorced and scattered throughout the world. Judah did not get divorced. Or though, although it does states that Judah was played more of a harlot than the house of Israel. But because of the promise made to King David, he did not divorce them. But in the parable, the prodigal son, being the house of Israel, Ephraim, the northern kingdom, comes back. And they have a great feast, right? Gives them the best robe. And the, the son that was there becomes jealous, right? That's going to be Judah. When Israel returns, Judah's going to be jealous and going to be some funny things going on. But that is what the parable of the prodigal son is about. It's about Ephraim and Judah. So I'll start over. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. See, it's reference in Egypt when they came out, the Exodus, because this is second Exodus language. My covenant, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. A covenant, marriage covenant, that's what it's about. I will be your God and you will be my people. And that is why Messiah, Jesus, Emmanuel, had to die. Go back and view that video. Why did Messiah really have to die? Verse 33. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. What is he saying? The law... I will put my law. He's talking about he's going to put Torah in their minds and write Torah in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Covenant language. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord for they shall, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. <sighs> that explains itself, doesn't it? Now I'm going to finish here, but I'm going to finish with a couple of verses here. First, I am in James 4, chapter, James, chapter 4, and I'm going to read verse 12. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? The lawgiver is Jesus at Mount Sinai who saves us who is our redemption Jesus and to destroy who destroys which nations does he destroy when he returns at his second coming because just as the first exodus where he was destroying people and land areas so shall be like the second exodus. And just as we saw in Jeremiah... Verse 10.
Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, who gathers the Messiah Jesus in Mawel. He who scattered Israel will gather him. It was Jesus who scattered Israel. So I hope this clears up Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. I hope this was a blessing to you. I pray that the God of Israel, of the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only one true God, blesses you, comforts you, and keeps you. <laughs>